So tonight is uh, Norman Edelbrock is the founder and president and co-founder of Four Points Land Surveying and Engineering located in Hannibal, Missouri. Norm received his Illinois license in 1996 and also licensed in Missouri and Iowa. Norm has been surveying since 1989 and is still out beating the brush every day. He is immediate past president of the Illinois Professional Land Surveyors Association and the Missouri Society of Professional Surveyors CST committee chairperson. Norm was appointed to the CST board in the summer of 2018. Norm strongly believes in mentoring the younger surveyors and using the CST program as a tool to do so, which is why we, uh, Amanda wanted uh, him to join in on this and help us with this conversation. So, and then with Amanda, Amanda has worked in the land surveying industry for more than 20 years. She's from Southwestern New Mexico and graduated New Mexico State University with a degree in surveying engineering and from University of Alaska Anchorage with a degree in geomatics. She's experienced in working with the BLM in the Alaska and New Mexico field offices, conducting original boundary surveys and dependent resurveys. She's licensed professional land surveyor in six Western states, Alaska, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and Nevada. Amanda had owned her own land surveying firm in Silver City, New Mexico for a number of years conducting boundary surveys. She is currently employed by the United States Army Corps of Engineers as a district land surveyor in the Walla Walla District of Washington. And she is also president-elect of NSPS. So Norman and Amanda, thank you both for uh, joining us tonight. And hopefully we'll uh, be able to kind of give everybody a background of the CST and, you know, been around forever, but it still, still needs to take off. You know, even after 40 years, it still needs to take off, I think. So let's, uh, hopefully we can give everybody a, a rundown on application to exam kind of is what I was hoping to do, so. Yep. Um, applications so far this year uh, are outstanding. I can't yep. believe the number of, uh, uh, so the CST board members uh, interview all the prospective proctors ahead of time. And um, the number of people that have been applying to be proctors are, is uh, amazing. And I'm really happy to see that, which means that there's at least one other person going to be taking the test. Um, I don't know where we are currently right now on our scene, but uh, uh, as of the end of 2020, we had uh, 2,221 active CSTs across the country. Um, and like I said, it's going like gangbusters so far this year, and hopefully we can keep that up. And Norm, is this still the uh, most licensed, I mean, most certified CSTs, um, Florida? Is that correct? That is correct. Florida. It's a very has, popular program in Florida. Yeah, and they have a lot of municipalities and governmental agencies, I'll put it that way, that require the CST to be a prerequisite for contracting purposes. Um, I'm looking at my list. Uh, Texas is number two with the number of CSTs. Um, I get a lot of calls from folks in Texas, uh, proctors and the CSTs both, but, uh, uh, and that's, NSPS sent out a letter here last year to all the state DOTs asking them to be supportive of the program and trying to implement their program or the CST program into their well, maybe contracting, but even into into their systems. So um, I don't know that that, because it was last year, who really knows how well that's going to take off, but hopefully that helps grow the program even more. Um, I don't know. Uh, Trent just put up the website for CSTNSPS.com. And another great one to go to is actually LearnCST.com as well. There's some tutorials and some study stuff in there as well. And I think people have had a lot of success if they access that site as well. What was that yeah. again, Amanda, learn? Yeah, Trent just posted it in the chat. Jim, it's oh, okay, learncst.com. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the Learn CST uh, up until last year was a totally free platform you could go in they guided you through the program 
Um, you can still do that, but now there's also a paid portion of that platform and it's still on your own time, but they actually kind of break it into blocks of time for you to try and help keep you organized and moving forward. And I couldn't tell you, it's been a while since I looked at it, but you know, like maybe every three months you should get through a portion of it and then take the exam for like the level one or level two, whatever it is. Um, and I, I don't even know the price, sorry. I didn't think to look that up. Um, I'm giving a presentation at the end of the week. I better look it up for that one, so. <laughs> uh, it says uh, Fast Track is $95. The basic access is zero. Right. Um, you can get up to 40% off if you have multiple employees. So, yeah, there's there's some companies, uh, McKim Preet out east. They uh, they have an MOU with NSPS, and they get a discount whenever they have more than ten employees take the CST exam. Um, and there's other ones. That's one I know of. Um, there's other, like I said, there's others across the country. Um, I know California. California used to be really big in the CST. I don't think they're not so much anymore. <laughs> really ever got a big, big push on it, but we got kind of a little push started and right. uh, we're kind of directing new people into that realm. And uh, it may be something that we, um, we should be looking at in the future for contracting out. Um, and also for internal employee development for, particularly for agencies like in my past. Right. Yeah. That's, and that's another good point is that a lot of companies are using this as employee development. Um, you know, the, the individuals pass the test, they got, a, they have a sense of accomplishment. They're probably going to get some sort of raise or bonus for it. Um, plus, you know, that individual's gone through some training and has, the test in their background. And so you've got, you know, you as an employer probably have a little more confidence in what they're going to be able to do and what their capabilities are. Um, you know, they've got the, you have the level one, two, and three, and then the level four. Uh, levels one through three are all uh, either a, a paper test or online, which we're trying to push more online tests. Um, and then level four is a essay type exam and you have 30 days to complete that one send it in we grade them every quarter so and Norm well, that's exactly what my company is trying to uh get started right now we're uh we're having a meeting tomorrow as a matter of fact on uh trying to find a uh, well we're putting together an avenue where our technicians can get some formal training and uh, we've we've looked into this, and we want to uh, we want to structure it after the CST, and we want to get them. Uh, we would like to get them certified as well. And if I understand you correctly, this Learn CST that would be the place to point them to. Is that am I on the right track there? Yeah, that that's an avenue you can point them to. Um, like Trent said, there there's a free version of that, but then there's also a paid one. Like I said, the paid one is more structured and they have, if you don't pass, I think they let you go back through the program again. Um, you know, they're, it's run by Alan Cheeves um, with the American Surveyor and they're very helpful. If, if anybody's got any problems, you call them up, they try and help you through it. Um, but uh, that's a good one. Um, I do have, if anybody wants any, I do have some type of little rough curriculum that I'd be willing to share with you. Uh, the unions out east, <laughs> uh, the unions out east, um, there was a couple individuals who put together some programs for those folks at one time. Um, so, I mean, you could take that and run with it however you want to do it. So. And Norm, there are two tracks, which, um, which is most popular? I hadn't noticed there's office and then there's field. Do you know which one is most popular track people take? I, I would say probably the field is the most popular. 
Um, but I would imagine that's going to change over time. Sure. As more people are working from home and changing the way they kind of, you know, nobody wants to, nobody wants to commute anymore and we all want to work from home. <laughs> so it could change the landscape a lot. And one option is to, kept, to contact Trish Maggie. She runs the CST program at NSPS. Her contact information is on the cstnsps.com page. But um, Norm, can you tell us about um, how the directors work out there too? Another resource are the state directors. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the board, we have the CST board. We meet once a quarter. Um, we don't meet in January, but we meet, uh, we were in um, Orlando in April will be at Vincennes University, which is where our test is housed on, on the computer. We'll be there at the end of July. And then in this fall, we haven't picked a spot, um, but we're probably gonna go west somewhere. Um, we meet, we review the test, uh, look at test questions constantly. Um, we, uh, whatever business we have to handle, usually it's dealing with the test itself is the biggest bulk of our work. Um, as for the folks at NSPS, Sarah, Trish, everybody's willing to help. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of them. Uh, Sarah is the one who you schedule the exam through and all the applications, Proctor and those who want, are wanting to take the test, they go through her. Um, she sets it up on the CST website, the calendar, where if you think you want to take a test, you can, like I said, work, you can see what's out there and you might get lucky and find somebody who's doing a test in your area and you can maybe piggyback on there. Um, but they've got, they've got all kinds of information that they're willing to share with folks um, and help anybody out that needs help. Um, I'll go back to the, our, our quarterly meetings. So if you have a, when you take the test, if you have a 70% or higher, you've automatically passed. There's no questions about it. Um, if you're taking the online exam, you know at the end of the test whether or not you've passed or not. We always tell people if you've got between 65 and 69%, uh, that's a pending, what we call a pending score. Uh, and that's due to the fact that when we are, when anybody's taking the test, they can challenge a question. It doesn't matter what the challenge is, whether or not they think the answer is not there. We missed a comma in the sentence structure, whatever it is. Um, and if we find that somebody's got a valid challenge, we give a point to anybody who took the that test during that time frame. So if you've got a 67 and all the scores are ranging a little bit on the higher side and that one point gives you a 68, chances are you're gonna pass the test. Um, our goal is to try and help everybody be as successful as they can. And we see that as a way to try and help out as much as we can without just letting them pass. So. Um, what are the renewal fees for the CST? $40 question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's $40. Um, and it doesn't go up by level. It's $40. It's $40 across the board. Great. Uh, to take the exam, it's uh, 180. And if you, if you, uh, and there's an application, that's the application fee, I believe. And then if you, let me look. I should have had you put this up on the share screen, Trent. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. If you got your stuff, you can still share it. Hey, Trent, if I end up speaking again, I don't want Amanda being the moderator. She asked the tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's well, kind of know. got an inside track here. You yeah, know? <laughs> I know just enough to be dangerous or annoying or both. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just kidding, you know. I used to be on the board with Norm. It's good to see you, Norm. It's been a long I've time. I've seen you too. Uh, <laughs> so the exam fee is 180 uh, if you're military or active student or a veteran, it's $120. Uh, there's group discounts for organizations of 10 or more. Like I said, the MOU, 
uh, you can have an MOU with uh, NSPS and they will offer a break financially. Um, and then the annual fee is $40. Um, there's one thing I wanted to go through real quick. So the, the uh, entry level is level one. And basically that's, you know, somebody who probably came on board within the last six months, you can have them start going through that. There's really no experience there necessary. Just make sure they know their math. I'll tell you that right now and how to run their calculator. Um, level two, you need a minimum of a, of a year and a half worth of experience. Level three is three and a half years and level four is five and a half years. Um, if a licensed surveyor wants to be a CST, they can start at any level. They could do one, two, three, and four, or they could just go to four. And as long as they pass the exam, they, they're a CST. And there are some licensed guys who've done that, mainly, again, because of the uh, uh, contractual obligations. But then uh, I've heard some of the guys say that they, they wanted to do it because then they could show their employees that they've done it also. They've been down that same path. So they're not asking them to do something that they wouldn't do themselves. Hey, Norman, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, I'm Barry Scott. I work with uh, ETM Surveying in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Um, we just recently installed this as our, our betterment program for our field staff. We got about 45 field crew members and we got incentivized with bonuses and raises. So we've been going through this whole program. We're doing the Learn CST um, track and everything. Boys just took, a, I think we had 13 of them test Friday. And we were actually kind of surprised about how difficult some of it was on level one, considering, like you said, that's supposed to be entry level with less than, I think it says less than a thousand hours, which is what a half a year of experience. Right. Um, I mean, they were asked to calculate volumes of pipe with gallon flow and, you know, conversions of, you know, Celsius to Fahrenheit and things like that stuff that may be simple to somebody that's been doing it a while, but it was kind of shocking to see how difficult level one was. Right. Yeah, and that's something we deal with all the time. And uh, it's just something we deal with all the time. <laughs> so. Have um have you had your guys try the learncst.com? Um, that might be yeah, a good yeah, resource. We joined, yeah, we're we're paid members of that. So we did the whole fast track thing for all of our employees. Um yeah, it's it was just a little bit interesting to see. I mean, because I think every one of us has an idea of what entry level would mean for a test and then to see some of the things that were on it, or at least to hear what was on it from my employees, it was a bit, uh, it was uh, interesting. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that feedback because that's something we need, you know, this thing was set up in 1986. Um, and so that's that's good to know and, and hear that feedback. Um, you know, And it's definitely a different world, you know, from there, um, the oh, yeah. amount of, calculators and calculations we do by hand has changed a lot and um and some of that maybe can be addressed in the future barry thank you for sharing right um norm i, I have a question if you would yes if i have a uh, a surveyor let's say a party chief who um has been you know been around several years party chief stuff like that and he wants to jump into the cst program can he jump in at level two or three or does he have to start at one and work his way up I think he can, you know, I would have to check on that. If you go to the website, it'll tell you for sure. Yeah, I'm the coordinator for Georgia for Samsung. And in the past, we've had crew chiefs and the stuff be able to jump in at level two and three. I just caution them that the math is really heavy and just be aware of that fact. Yeah, and that's why this comes with um, it, it comes with a, a big reputation behind yeah. it because once you get that and you get those credentials, you can go anywhere in the country and and yep. really you know have some have some backing behind your name without a PLS or an LSIT. Yep. And and that's the goal behind this is to show a standardization of what people have met and what kind of criteria there is. And unfortunately, the math is part of that. And that's yep. always sometimes our biggest hangup as surveyors is 
and mine personally as well was getting through the calculus you know yeah. and um not that this is calculus based but um yeah, yeah it's definitely a problem and yeah. it's definitely a hurdle <laughs> yes Amanda, would that be a good uh would that be a good uh use of my book it would that. be. I think Mr. Cohn, now is the time to plug that book, please. Yep. <laughs> I thought it was shameless enough the way I did it. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Um, Barry, you might want to listen up here for James Cohn. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, it's, uh, I, this, is a, this is a wonderful thing. I, if, if you have a second, I have a story to tell you about it. When I was a young man, I was working up in Canada. And the Alberta Society of Engineers had a certified technician program. And I took that and I became a senior engineering technician and it changed my entire career. It went from me just having a job to me having a profession, just that certification. And the, so there's a lot of intangibles to this that are, that are really gonna help. And I, that's why we're pushing so hard here in the state of Washington to get something going. If I can get it going with my company, then I can take it to the LSAW and talk to them about it. Yeah, and Jim, talk about your book a little bit. I think that would be helpful to some of these guys well, that don't know about it. It's, it's a book that I wrote about surveying for math. Uh, Tim, you're familiar with it, and uh, and I know Amanda is, and um, I give it out for free, anybody who wants it, and it goes over basic math concepts, algebra and trigonometry, and then it goes over, you know, like uh, bearing, bearing intersection problems. It's taking the math and it's using them in a surveying thing, compass rule adjustments, curves, all those kinds of things. And uh, it's, it's several chapters and it's uh, almost 200 pages. And anybody who wants it, if you can just contact me um, or uh, any, and if there's other sources, I give it out for free. So that's, that's a all. Jim, I just posted a link to it on TechBooks uh, on the uh, chat. Oh, I didn't know it was on TechBooks. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, tech, technodocbox.com. Awesome. Whatever the heck that is. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyhow, it's, it's, it's there for the giving, and it's, uh, and it's something that uh, the, the surveying technician is sorely and it, it, it's intended for the surveyor who hasn't had formal education. You know, if they've gone to university, they're going to have all this stuff. But there's so many of them that don't have it. And that's what it's intended for. Well, that, I think that's a, to Barry's point earlier. I think in today's world, you've got the data collector mm -hmm. with you all the time. And these guys aren't crunching numbers like we used yep. to, you know. I remember sitting on the hood of the truck and we're laying out a curve and we're calculating the next station down the, down the line, you know, and um, nowadays you just push it, push a couple buttons and there you go. And so how to do the math is, is, uh, is tough. Yep. Yep. And very important too. Yes. Yep. And that was my main warning point is just with technology that actually performing the calcs and stuff has really become a lost art with crew chiefs. Yeah, oh, yeah. unfortunately it has, Joshua. Yeah. I had a crew chief a while back. I said, I want you to check between these two points. And if, the, and if you don't get what the uh, record information is, just prorate it and go ahead and stake the lot. And he looked at me like a deer in the headlights. Yep. Yeah. You know, and maybe yeah. that has led to our lower numbers of PLSs if, um, yep. if it's just all in the calculator, all in the controller. Um, they're not making that next hurdle. So books like Jim's and, um, and Mentoring Mondays and stuff like this to give you all tips and tricks to get through this is, is very helpful because the math isn't going to go away. Um, that's, that's a minimum and that's a bar we have to set to get through some of this. But if we can help you in any way, um, one thing that was very helpful for me is I did take some classes at um, community colleges because sometimes at the bigger universities you get stuck with non-English speaking professors, particularly in mathematics. Yep. And a great tip is to go to a community college and take a, a math class there because um, you, will, you will have smaller class sizes and you, your likelihood of getting a first English speaking professor or teacher is greater there. I might make a comment here from the CFEDS side of things. I've been the CFEDS uh, 
training coordinator for over four years now. And of course, I've been involved in CFED since its inception and then the advanced cadastral survey. And I, I taught the manual for 12 years at Great Basin College. And right down to every student almost, there was a few that, that caught it the first time around. We have a very limited amount of math that goes into the manual of survey and instruction yep. really, compared to math in our surveying profession as a whole. We don't get into as much of the construction type survey and things like that. But I tell you, our unit number two of the examination, which is all of the mathematical processes contained in the manual of surveying instructions, that's the one that probably 50% of the folks fail the first time around. And uh, even they, they go through the course, they do a bunch of those. And before I even administer the exam to the person's coming through, I send out a whole bunch <coughs> of additional practice questions too, just to bone up on it just before you take the exam. But I'm always just cringing every time I go to unit two and, and grade them and, and there we go again. If they're gonna fail, it's gonna be in that unit two double proportion, grant boundary, all everything that goes with it. Basic trig, trigonometry, Pythagorean theory, theory, uh, formulas and things of that nature. You know, I've always looked at a lot of surveying math as being resolving the right triangle horizontally and vertically. And you know, the rest of it is where you apply it, how you apply it and which math process you use. So, um, you know, it, Barry, I, I understand too, you know, about being hit with so much at once, but there is so much there by the time you get to course four or so of the CST. And Steve, you make a great point that, um, you know, just because you fail at once, that, that's a great practice way to learn what is on that test and to take it again. Do not let defeat, um, do not let one non-pasher <laughs> stop you from this. Um, we have to all be very determined and um, and focused on the end goal and um, and taking it again is totally totally acceptable. So. Yep, and actually, normally on, on a normal test, I haven't checked the numbers on this in a while, but typically, for those who retake the CST, the uh, second time around is a better uh, outcome than the first one. Definitely, so, yeah. So that's better for them. Um, uh, that's a, that's not a common thing in in exam taking. Yeah, yeah I was thinking usually, isn't it the other way? It's absolutely if you don't pass it the first time. You're not your chances of passing it the second time are less. So yeah, they go go downhill considerably in in most exams. Yep. Yeah, and the CST is unique for that. So maybe that that speaks to the the determination and the um, the drive for these technicians to get this done because it can mean a lot of money in your pocket. Yes, it can. Yeah. And the bottom line, we want our clients to be served properly, don't we, folks? Yes, we do. Oh, exactly. Uh, it's like a carpenter, you know, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> well, and we want, you know, like I said earlier, we want these guys to be successful and pass. Um, and so, again, I, I'm glad to hear Barry's comments because I, that means we need to relook at some things on our test, but, um, you know, it, what I like is that this seems to be a, a, a community where people are trying to help each other. And if yeah. these guys are having a having problems passing, um, they, it's not anything to be ashamed of, but they need to reach out and ask for some help and I'm sure they're going to get it. Um, you know, if, if anybody contacts me, I'm going to try and help them point them into well, like Jim's book, that's a, that looks really good. I'm downloading it right now. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, and the learning curve from going from a paper test to a, an online one, it, it's difficult. The first time I took a online one was in Utah and I failed Utah's because of that. It's, it's such a different, has such a different feel to it to take one on a computer versus on the paper. And so um, we do not need to be to inhibit or be ashamed of the fact that th these are difficulties that we can all rise through though. Yep. Well, you know, that's our, that's, you know, we're not legally bound to mentor our subordinates, subordinates. if you will, or the new ones, but we certainly are morally bound. I mean, it's just part of our profession. Yeah. And uh, I think we all know that and we all do that because there were those 
that we can talk about all night about people who helped us coming up, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, and that's, there's a gentleman I proctored a test for here in Missouri, and he, um, he had work studies after work with his guys. You know, he'd order in pizza or subs or whatever, and he, they'd go through and work a bunch of stuff um, in preparation for the test. And so, um, and one thing too that I think people get hung up on is the test questions because our, our exam is what is the best answer? Yeah. And so I think they get kind of hung up in that, that mentality of, well, I don't know that, you know, they, they just get lost in that. Um, we see a lot of, uh, people challenging questions that it's like, well, you really didn't think about what you were looking at here. And it's kind of more almost common sense that they just missed it, so. Right, and um, and usually on, um, on multiple choice questions, and Jim can speak more to this than me, but there are there usually are two obvious wrong answers and then two, two answers that you might fight over in your head. Yep. You always got to go with the more right of them. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes right that's... Now writing, writing yeah. Writing test questions for the exam, the state exam, yeah. Yeah, and, and so sometimes that's a great trick just to keep in mind that eliminate the most obviously wrong ones and then try and fight over the last two that um, could be the potential winner. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um... I know a lot of the stuff, uh, if you kind of watch on the Facebook forums, they're always looking for um, study guides or, you know, yeah. you, you said you might be able to have something that you have put together on a study guide of some sort. Yeah, there's, uh, it's, uh, I need, I haven't had a chance to tweak it yet due to work being extremely busy. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, there's also on the website, there's a list of books that they can go through. Yeah, um, stuff there, but uh, yeah, and the the guide that I have is probably more for somebody who's wanting to take the individuals through preparation, not necessarily so much for the individual looking at it themselves. But I'm more than happy to share whatever I've got if I, you know, that's not a problem. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and I, and I, I have a. Go ahead. I have a I have a couple Trent I'll send you okay. where I'm, I'm I'm doing a class at the summer conference next week perfect for for Georgia and I've been started doing training on weekends throughout the state and surprisingly I'm getting 10 to that eh, 10 to 20 folks showing up and kind of just going over the math and the calcs kind of using Jim's book and making folks realize it's the data collector makes it easy, but it's still relatively easy. There's not a whole lot you need to figure out. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and so in addition to Jim's book, we are about ready to roll out. You guys remember the uh, Jack Keen flip chart? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've converted that to a book format. Cool. And so it'll be set up similar to like a field book, kind of small like that. Um, and there'll be some pages at the back that they could have room to put their own notes in. Yep. And anybody that is going to be taking the exam, that'll be provided to them at no charge. And we're kind of talking about if somebody else wants to buy one, we will have them for some sort of nominal fee. We haven't decided that part yet. So. Okay. I wanted to bring your all's attention to this. Uh, you have this on the chat, this uh, D graphics 9906 for math for surveyors of mine. That's not my book. That's an old PowerPoint I put together some time ago. <laughs> but the one below it, the uh, dropbox.com, yep. something in here, uh, you can see that my, my book is on that one. So make sure you get the right one. And if you have any questions, just contact me. I'll just send it to you. I've got it in PDF form. Yeah. This goes uh, to show you once you post something on the internet, it never goes away. Huh? <laughs> you know, I don't remember posting that on the internet. <laughs> I, 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 at a conference, I taught it one time and that, you know, it just got legs, you know. All right. <laughs>
Um, the one on uh, the one in the Dropbox is the one you gave me, uh, which is your three dash three. So it should be your most current one, Jim. Yeah, my uh, I got a three dash four. I found some wrong answers in. Uh, I'll okay. send it to you. Okay, cool. I, I found some wrong answers in my uh, test questions and the exam questions. So okay. Uh, I saw on on the chat side, uh, Connie made the comment about volunteering to help with some matter, math tutoring. Yeah. Uh, this Zoom format would be perfect for that. Um, you know, Joshua could help, or me, anybody could help somebody yeah. on the other side of the country yeah. Yeah. Uh, with this. So, um, you know, and and again, if if anybody's got anything they want to share or have comments, please feel free to get a hold of me. That's as as being a board member. That's my job is to yep. take these comments and ideas and whatever, and take it back to the board and see what we can do to help improve the content and the exam and get more people passing. So yeah, yeah. of all programs, I, I really do have to say that Norman. Um, this program is insists on getting people past it is, is their goal to see you through to the end you know some of us might feel sometimes like that's not the goal at the state level or um, some other levels but that is that is beyond the goal here at cst is to help people succeed yeah yeah we want we want everybody to pass but we know at the same time that's not going to happen but we sure would love to see it so um anybody have any other questions I went away from the Zoom concept because a, a, a prevalent excuse I kept getting told was folks didn't have good internet connections at their house and things like that. Right. So I jokingly drove three hours to South Georgia and went, all right, well, I'm here, let's go. There's, there's no logic stopping you at this point. And I went through and it probably bought close to two or 300 old textbooks, surveying books and stuff. Mm. And I've actually been mailing them out to people interested in studying and taking the test just to really make it where there's no excuses to not try and work on it. Right. I mean, it's really been a pet peeve <clears throat> of mine. I had a good program going in Georgia about 10 years ago when I was super active before I decided to travel the country surveying. And now I'm back to being local again. So I got probably back involved with Samsung as our coordinator to try to build it back up again. That's awesome. You know, some people just want to do their eight and hit the gate. Yep. Well, and that's, it, yep. go ahead, Joshua, go ahead. I'm making up from working 60 to 80 hour weeks the last six years to, I only have to do 40 now. It's like, I have a lot of free time. Right. <laughs> and I don't do yeah. free time well. <laughs> and the guy that I proctored that exam for, he, he said he struggled getting his guys to come in and spend the time to be go through the prep for the training. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if you don't, and if your employees aren't willing to step up and do what they got to do, it's kind of hard to, yeah, it's kind of hard to get them to pass. Yeah. yeah we, and, um, and, Another thing is that anybody can proctor this um, as long as they apply and they get um, passed on by the board. And, and I know there's some stuff in there about being an engineer and a surveyor, but you can even get it proctored, you know, by just by an irresponsible individual that fills out the form and, and can prove that they're, they're, they're good to watch you and not um, let you just walk through it, you know, so. Yeah, as, as long as you're not a direct supervisor of the individual taking the exam, most likely you're gonna be uh, able to be a proctor. Um, I've approved librarians, uh, several testing centers uh, at like community colleges or colleges, whatever, um, a couple preachers. Um, <laughs> so it, it could be anybody. If it's a big enough firm, I usually try and tell them, find your HR director and see if that individual would do it. Yeah. I just recently had uh, one pass at uh, the first Friday of this month and but, you know, like I've always talked about, too, it's up to us as employers. So um, I'm a proctor here, but obviously I couldn't do it for him. So the friend of mine in Reno, Greg, he went through and got his proctor exam. And 
I paid for, you know, Colin to drive up on Thursday, take the exam on Friday, and then he went fly fishing for the weekend or whatever, right? And he passed it, passed it on the first time on that Friday. So it's just as much to up to us as employers to, you know, give them the incentive to do that kind of stuff. So did you give him a raise Monday? I surely did. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thanks, Kippy. That's great. Yeah. So. Tell him I said congratulations. That's yeah, awesome. Exactly. Yeah, that he passed. Yep. Yeah, he's been, uh, he started with us just right in the, he was going through construction management at uh, UNLV and then uh, he was just going to work with us part time and got involved with us uh, last April and quickly changed his uh, major and went and got his 107 and got his CST. Wow. And so, yeah, he's, he's off and running. Story. He's off and running. So. Yeah, and that's really the point of this is to set people up for success, not just as being land surveyors, but even in other things, you know what I mean? Because passing something that's difficult is is the key to a whole bunch of other things. This is just a, a stepping stone to so many more things in your life. Right, and that was why, you know, I was kind of making the post about using this as a stepping stone, right, to get into the FS and the PS. I mean, all of these exams are just helping you learn to take an exam. And so, yep. right, right. And especially to pass your 107. So that's so important yeah. and popular right now for people to be able to apply drones, you know, and do some aerial mapping. And, um, and this is helpful to practice. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I tell a lot of my technicians that you can still make a very good living and have a very good career without being, without becoming a PLS. Absolutely. And this CST that gives you those technology, uh, those technician credentials that are really valuable. And uh, we all know that, that when that party chief goes out in the field, he's carrying our stamp with us. So yep. the more we can teach them, the better off we, we are going to be. Yep, exactly. Well, and that's a good point, Jim, because I, I didn't think about that at the beginning of this. But, you know, we have a lot of technicians that are never going to go to college. They don't want to go to college. Right. Um, some of them shouldn't go to college. Um, and this is a good way for them to get some kind of credential and get that plaque up on the wall and all that. And they, you know, build their self-esteem and their self-confidence and um, just makes them a more successful employee for, for you. Yeah. And, That's and what I, like. I think we have to be looking, we, our candidates have to be looking at this industry in, the, in a longer term uh, perspective than what happens between now and payday. You know, I mean, we're in a boom situation right now where it seems like everybody is looking for work. And if somebody has a pulse and an interest, they're getting hired. But, you know, we've seen downturns in the economy over the past three and a half decades. And, you know, every once in a while, things could start to slide. And then this is the one of the ways that that the field technicians can say, well, you know, I've got if they get cut loose, well, I've got my level two. So I can go to this other firm and say, hey, I'm a level two CST. Yep. And I've been working, you know, doing this and participating in mentoring Mondays and everything else, right? Yep. No, that's a great point. That, that gives you a leg up on your competition in the job market, you know. Uh, so yeah. that's a great point. I mean, from a hiring perspective, I've hired more CST twos and threes that really had minimum amount of experience, enough to take the tests over people with nine or 10, 12 years in the field because I knew they took that extra step and there was proof that they actually, at least at one point in time, knew enough information to pass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it, it takes the gold color, the, the gold covering off the poop from a resume perspective. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, this it's, also it's, sounds... it's a minimum competency, you know, that yep. you can rely on. Yep. This also sounds like a good path for people who didn't have a chance to go to college or a survey program yep. to, to build up to their LSIT level and not be overwhelmed with one big test all at once. Oh yeah. Or, or oh, yeah. one big study landslide at once. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And the, the best page to start off on is the um, cstnsps.com forward slash applicants. And there it actually watch, walks you step by step 
through the application process, um, finding a proctor in your state, yeah. and um, and then actually applying for the exam and everything. And so um, for those of you guys that are serious, I really look at this page and um, and and get a hold of it and pass it out to the people that work for you. Yeah, and a lot of the state societies have CSD coordinators now. So if you at least from a local perspective, go to your state societies and check. And I get a lot of requests and stuff from Florida and adjoining states just because I guess I'm dumb and I'm overly active, but that's fine. <laughs> no, we appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. I might have to pick your brain on some things here in the near future. So, <laughs> I mean, I think that the test did change some probably 10 years ago and it's, it did get a little bit harder, but I think it was the direction we needed to go. So in the math that's on it, it, it it's surprising because we say it's entry level, really zero to six, I mean, six months, experience but it's a little bit more involved than that they really do need to take the take the time to study read the material and practice i mean not, not yeah. be, and not be, not be afraid to ask questions right six months of serving in the field 20 years ago isn't six months of serving in no. the field what it is today you know well, especially so. now you have a pulse and a driver's license you hit these buttons Here's your point list you're going to stake that we preloaded in the data collector. There's not a lot of mental aptitude with the with kind of how we're running things now, the evolution. Right. Yeah. And well, and like I said, we so we go through the test every quarter. Yeah. And these guys challenge, you know, if they challenge a question or something, I've seen, and again, a lot of it is they just need to, and I know it's a time test and they're yep. under under the gun and they got to move. But at the same time, they need to just take a deep breath and really just read the question because there was one recently that we, it was an exhibit and it had, it was like a boundary survey and it called out different monuments around yeah. the perimeter and said, uh, what line are these two monuments on? Are they the west, north, south, east, west, whatever? Well, it called out two stones and they were on the south side of the exhibit. Mm -hmm. They totally missed that. It was like they picked out a something, or no, it was a, what was the barrier between these two monuments? Yep. And it's like they they weren't reading the question, they weren't looking at the exhibit, and they missed it. And all, all they had to do was just sit down and look at it, and they would have figured it out really easy. And that's so that's a anybody who's got anybody yep. looking to take the test. Just tell them to take a deep breath and make sure they're reading through it and take their time. Again, I understand they're under a time crunch, but they've just got to take it a little bit easier and really look at the question. And that's a skill we want all our technicians to have yeah. because um, taking a deep breath and looking at the problem in the field is what makes you a powerful technician and, yeah. and very useful. I think what it taught us was that we needed to teach how to take a test a lot better. Exactly. Yes. Because, I mean, yeah. so there's a question about volume of a pipe. You missed that when you didn't fail the test. There's 200 questions. Yes. yes. You know You know what I mean? It's being smart enough to know where to spend your time on the test, not. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly, Barry, because you don't waste your you don't waste your time on a question you're not going to know the answer to. Yeah. Or you can actually you eliminate the outliers as well and at least get a 50 50 chance you know because usually they put some extraordinary numbers in there that don't make sense you know either one way or the other and so yeah it's yeah, test taking I would, skills yeah, i would say norman though what if you go with the cst's website and look at all the examples they do provide you for each one the test was much more difficult than the examples that are provided yes so if, yeah i, I, I would agree security. with that they get I a agree. Of security about knowing what they think they're going to get and then they walk in and you know, if you get guys that panic the minute they get a hard one they don't know, then yep. those guys are going to be in trouble anyway during the test, probably. So it's a uh, that was that was really my only take on it was it was much harder than the examples provided. Yeah, yeah. and I I've heard that in the past, and I know our sample of questions on our website need to be updated dramatically because they're they're outdated. Um, but uh, and it like I said, it, it's kind of a it's a constant work in progress and yep. we, oh, you know, we, we appreciate the comments and we want to make we want to make it better 
Yeah, we're not deterred in any way. Cause like everybody on this, this, this Zoom call has said, we're all about making our employees better. So all yep. it is, is we're just going to have to buckle down and we're going to get all 45 of them through it one way or another. Yeah. Good. Yes, Steve. Don't we as instructors and test examiners and stuff like that, uh, we have a tendency to, to react to almost any comment that comes our way and we want to give it a fair chance. But as many times as we've administered the CFEDS exam and then all of a sudden somebody comes in and uh, we, we have a sheet that goes out with the exam to make comments on and it can address a particular question. All of a sudden another one, one comes up that's been addressed 10, 15 times and it gets right back to this idea we would like to satisfy them. But it's pretty indicative that they didn't read the question well or they didn't study that. Uh, I have a feedback. Every time that somebody fails unit one, two, or three, then I go back through. And of course, they don't have access to the questions themselves, but I have the source material. So then I go back through, and before they take that unit again, I give them feedback and say, okay, here is the subject matter you need to bone up on more next time through. Do what you've done, but this item, this item, and this item. What really blows me is when I've only had it happen a couple of times in these four plus years, but I've had folks come in, take the exam the first time and fail all three units. And not by just a little, but by a whole bunch. Well, that tells me, hey folks, you know, um, you didn't really come to the party, did you? Right, right. <laughs> exactly. But we, we, we do tend to, you know, try to help everybody out, even at times when it, it's apparent they didn't put in the time. Yeah. Well, and that's when we go through the test too, we have the, I can never say the word, but we have the, all the statistics that tell us how the test questions did all that, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and there's times where we'll, you know, we'll see that not many people are passing the question and maybe we need to change that question and uh, make it so it's not quite as difficult. So, yeah, and sometimes those are really just outdated questions, Norm, you know, and we've had that a lot when I, when I was working with you guys that, um, that there's some equipment that, I mean, I don't even know of, you know, yeah. and um, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. And if you tried to get me to, you know, pull a chain, I would be, I would be a helpless mess. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and, um, and that just takes time, but I, I really hope everybody knows that the end goal here is, is to keep improving and, and to pass people. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the idea, just to keep improving and make it better. And we're not always successful, but we sure are trying our hardest to make it a success and make everybody a success in passing the test. Perfect. So basically, like uh, Amanda said, just kind of starting on the CST NSPS website, start on the applicants, go through that. Um, if you do like later this week, if you'll share just kind of uh, your syllabus of kind of what you have. I know there's, I found a bunch of stuff on here while we were looking as well that kind of gives the breakdown for each one of the tests. I found the sample test, so. But. Yeah, and there's, uh, I'll send out, I've got on my PowerPoint presentation for this week, I've got a uh, kind of a simplified, breakdown on um, what each level kind of covers and, and they build on, you know, level one, you start out pretty basic, but level two builds on that level three builds on one and two. Yep. So some of the, some of the uh, items in the list are the same, but it's just, as you progress up the ladder, you get more, um, you get more into the weeds, so to speak. Got it. Um, yeah, so under the on work, work elements is where I found that kind of the yes. syllabus yes. breakdown. Yep. Right. Um, again, there's a, a recommended books under the applicants that talks about different books you can that are available. Um, one thing, and I know that it's being updated now, is the uh, right there. Yep. Ah, yep gotta have you really need this you gotta have this yep um i know and i know i think mine's 1982 i may I may have been one of the last ones but um they're working on updating that now 
and but that is a must-have book. So, um, yeah, under that uh, training tab, under the applicants, that's got the test taking strategies, the work elements, which gives you the kind of the breakdown, some more survey problem books to look at. Yep. And then setting up your CST training test and program and test taking tips. So, yep. And there are a fair amount of first aid and safety questions. So try and find a first aid book and read through that. Um, I think the American Red Cross has one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what that's actually under the recommended books. First yeah. aid and safety handbook by American Red Cross. Yeah. And there's a lot of books in here that really, they're good books, uh, but I sure would not recommend them for a level one or level two. Um, I mean, for example, there's a, uh, da, 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 where was that? I just saw it. Um, well, like the BLM manual, really the, for the most part, levels one and two aren't gonna need that. Uh, but if you're, even if you're out East on the East coast where you're in a meets and bounds state, you still might be asked some PLS -S questions. So um, they need to have some kind of idea about that. Well, gentlemen, I, I'm gonna have to excuse myself. I have another meeting to go to. I apologize, uh, but I really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for your input. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> yep, man to see you in the fall. All right. Thanks, <laughs> Jim. Okay, yeah, I think uh, definitely a lot of useful information on here, and then we can kind of try to compile stuff a little bit more. I'll work together. Yep. I'll get some stuff when we post this video on the website. I'll throw a bunch of this links and stuff on that website. So. Yeah, and, and on here is, there's a map that shows the coordinators by state. Uh, and you and, have three quarters of the US. Yeah, I have three quarters of the US, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but that's, a, you know, that's okay, because I enjoy visiting with everybody. I mean, there you go. Um, I talked to you several yep. months ago, Trent, right? Yep, I, yep, exactly. That's the fun part, I mean, exactly. I enjoy that. I asked about two questions about being a proctor and then the rest is just regular stuff. So <laughs> right, exactly. That's good stuff. Uh, Amanda, this is kind of off topic. Uh -huh. I'm fascinated by the sign behind you. <laughs> it it looks legitimate. Um, it's actually a reproduction from Pottery Barn. <laughs> So I wish it had a better story than that. I need to like make up a, you know, a, but I had it hanging in my surveying office. It was pretty cool. Um, no, I, I, it looks I would hang that in my office. I mean, it's a nice sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks. <laughs> Does anybody else uh, got any more specific questions? For Norm or Amanda? No, I just... Uh, I'm happy to to help uh, proctor an exam, so I should probably get in touch with NSPS about becoming a proctor. Since yeah, I have no staff anymore. Yeah, <laughs> if you go to the website, you can fill out the application and submit it, and then somebody will contact you, and like I said, they'll grill you, and then uh, <laughs> um, if you pass, you're approved, and then you could be a proctor for anybody that you wanted to. So well, just as long as they don't check my references, I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and again, if anybody's got any questions or need anything, I am more than happy to help out where I can. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm traveling. I'm actually going to Alabama uh, okay. this week to present down there. The unfortunate part is I'm the last presenter of the last day so that'll be <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little too, well it's me and, uh, and Tim Burke so the both of us we gotta we gotta keep it interesting um, that'll be but, fun uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it I, I'm gonna take a couple of days off and do a little vacation while we're down there we haven't had a vacation in a while so that'll be kind of nice yeah. cool but if, if anybody needs anything has any questions comments I am always available to 
to listen and, and like I said, help out where I can. Thank Norman and Amanda. Yeah. Got both of you. That was perfect. I appreciate it both. I'll, uh, I'll get the stuff on the website, the video up, and then we'll put a bunch of this stuff. I did grab a lot of the files and put them in a Dropbox, so I'll put that link out there as well. Yeah, okay. I'll send you my stuff tomorrow, Trent. I'm not okay. going to turn my computer on because I only work 40 hours a week. All right, no worries. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah.